Hi, and good morning. Welcome to today's edition of Market Analysis. For today, February 15th, I'm Giovanni Benacourt, analyst, trader, and educator with Vantage Markets. Well, markets are acting like everything's fine, but everything isn't fine. Stock's strong start to 2023 goes against Jerome Powell's insistence that more monetary policy tightening is still to come. A recession is all but guaranteed if the Fed is serious about its 2% inflation target. This might make you turn more defensive on stocks, as a recent rally hasn't priced in a downturn. With equities trading near last summer's highs and at above average multiples, despite weakening earnings and the recent sharp move higher in interest rates, we maintain that markets are overpricing recent good news on inflation and are complacent of risks. Judging by the by the upbeat direction markets have been moving, investors are behaving like the Fed's about to ease up on the interest rate hikes. Fed policy isn't going to pull stocks lower and investors building to bounce will be a wise choice. Problematically, equity and credit markets are aggressively fighting the Fed, with valuations only supported by assumptions of ample rate cuts. History suggests these strategies often end in disappointment and cause and effect are conflated. Most stocks look overpriced at their current valuations, and any bullish bets go against the central bank's guidance. Some places to look uh, short to medium term could be the U.S. Treasury notes, municipal bonds, and corporate credits, as well as equities that have the potential for above average dividends. All the while, there's a key recession indicator that's blaring louder than it has in roughly four decades. The New York Fed's recession probabilities model, which is based on the spread between the three-month and the 10-year Treasury notes yields, shows the odds of a recession in the next year are at 57%. When the indicator breaches the 50% mark, it has a perfect track record. No one seems to care, probably because the Fed-induced recessions should have Fed-induced recoveries. Well, that being said, what can we expect then? What okay, is a sell-off in the in the in the equities? That's what we have. That's what we're seeing right right now. At the open, most likely we're gonna open down. That's the implied. We're gonna we're gonna open to the downside. So how how much lower can we go for zero? I guess. But obviously, looking into more uh, levels that can be you know attained. I'm looking at the uh, February low of the of, uh, 10th of of February, February 10th, and that could be a, a good place for us to come back down towards. Uh, if the setup is, is this movement to the downside, is, it will continue strongly into the open. Uh, so I'll be selling the equities. Nasdaq is I'm selling Nasdaq. I'm selling the S and P. I have my my support at 4060. My resistance at 4160. I'm selling the Dow. I'm I'm maintaining the uh, the resistance. I'm, uh, I'm changing the resistance of 34,200 and my support that low of, of February 10th. That's on the Dow. As well as for crude oil, crude oil is going to be bouncing uh, really here. Uh, let's, let's see what happens uh, with the inventory numbers uh, coming out. Uh, also, you know, the uh, President uh, Biden, he he's He's talking about releasing uh, in April uh, more barrels of the SPR. So, okay, uh, that basically he's doing that to counter counterattack what Russia said that they will stop production or they will they will cut off production by five hundred thousand barrels as sorry next month. So the move by President Biden to use the SPR again and bring that back into into the market but that's until april okay so between now and then we could probably continue to see fluctuation in to the upside in crude oil okay so anything any these are movements to the downside once we are able to identify that it has rebounded okay and let's see if we can go to a 30 minute chart here Let's see if it reloads, okay. Look at looking at this fluctuation in this 30 minute chart, okay. Let's take a look. The 21 moving uh, period moving average is right, right where the market is at, okay. So it acts as a dynamic support, yes, but now as the market breaks it, 
okay, if it trace as it trace below it, the momentum that is building, okay, it actually it went down, found a bottom, right around seventy eight dollars, and it rebounded back from it. So the, the consensus to be positive, to be bullish, um, on crude oil continues. So where where could we see here? The one good thing about it could be that yeah, the inventory is coming out. Uh, let's see if if the uh, if more more demand is being seen by obviously the opening of China. So all of that would imply that crude oil will spike because of the demand created by China. All right. So let's let's see uh, where that will take us. But for now. I am looking to buy crude oil, okay? So I'm, I'm long crude oil, all right? And on that gas, I'm flat. I'm, I'm not even in it, because this, this is just, it's gonna, I'm, I'm looking that it's gonna continue uh, to do just this, I have, as I have been mentioning for the past week. And then we have gold. Gold is looking to trade lower. 1800 is my is my target, Eight, initially 1820 uh, can be that support or the, the bottom for support, okay? So let's wait and see what happens. But yeah, selling uh, gold, okay, is, is pointing strongly to the downside, as well as selling silver, okay? There you have my support, okay, those levels, selling silver, selling copper, copper. In this case, we're very close to, to the, our support level of $4, that's a psychological support level. Once that's broken, okay, I'm gonna take this previous low of, of uh, January 9th, which is right around 390, uh, to for the market to come down and if, if it continues to come to break, if it breaks the four dollar, I'm looking for it to to uh, find support at 390. Okay, All right, 390. Then we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin has made has made a nice move up to the upside uh, after being just really idling, but uh, it's it's uh, I'm looking at a 25th. 20,500 to be the uh, resistance, and then 21,000 would be the support. But it'll be just, yeah, obviously buying for right now. Uh, then we have the euro. Euro is looking to say around the 107, but if the dollar, dollar index continues to climb, it'll put more pressure on the euro to the downside. So I have 106.5 as my support selling the euro, the pound selling the pound. Uh, as obviously this continues, I am using the this low of every seventh as my support, and then we have the dollar index. I'm having 104. Uh, the dollar index. Uh, if the dollar index continues to move higher, okay, that movement to the upside, uh, equities will move lower, metals will move lower, uh, perhaps also uh, crude oil will stay ironing. All right. Well, that's those are my levels for today. I wish you a fantastic trading day and I'll see you.